Hassan is, is very well known as a supplier and a designer of vehicles, um, both for OEMs working together with some of the major players in the world like uh, Oshkosh uh, Trucks, for example, and uh, Talus. Um, but we also have a, a small range of vehicles that we uh, um, uh, sell for, our, for ourselves based generally on commercial platforms. We have for example the, the Sandcat vehicle which is perhaps the best known of the, of the Plasan vehicles. It's actually in service in over 16 countries, five continents, really in, in use for various different uses from police through SWAT and paramilitary, border control, right the way up to uh, full combat vehicles, full uh, military, uh, military vehicles. Uh, we have a, a, a very large range of vehicles based on that very flexible Sandcat platform. We're showing here making its debut at Eurostatory is the fourth generation of our Sandcat vehicle. The Sandcat, as I've said, is in operation in more than 16 countries, um, was first shown back in 2004. Um, it's undergone various degrees of evolution, generational changes over that time. And what we're showing here for the first time is the fourth generation Sandcat architecture. Um, what we're adding to the Sandcat that, uh, that, that uh, is, is known and loved around the world is some extra modularity. This allows us to better answer individual requirements of end users. Um, and we're also adding, in the, the, the model that we're showing here, the new MLPV model, we're adding a much higher level of blast protection than we've ever, ever offered before on the Sandcat. So this new version that we're seeing here um, has uh, Sandag 2A, 2B levels of protection um, in class uh, uh, for eight occupants, um, still though with the same uh, dimensions, the same weight as the uh, existing Sandcat vehicles. So this is still a, in, the, in the nine ton category, but we're offering a much higher level of blast protection for, for, for eight occupants. Sandcat has been designed, as I say, to be a, a very modular system. Um, so we can carry various different weapons, whether they're manual weapons or, or remote weapons. What we're seeing here is a, a, a Raphael system, uh, RCWS. Um, we've designed Sandcats with um, all kinds of systems, including uh, mortars, spike missiles. The, the architecture is, we call it the kitted hull. So it's a bolted and bonded structure rather than a welded box, which means that we can actually change the roof as a, as a single part and put a different roof on depending on the weapon system that's on the vehicle. Um, and this can actually be changed over the life of the vehicle. It's actually possible to order a fleet of, uh, of Sandcat vehicles and with your current budget <laughs> and then in four years time you've got the budget for 30 RCWSs and we can provide 30 RCWS roofs which can be bolted on in place of the, 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 the passive uh, uh, turret that was previously on the vehicle. This is a unique proposition that the uh, Plasan architecture offers. The second all new vehicle that we're showing for the very first time here at Eurosatory is our Hyrax. The Hyrax is a, a new entry for Plasan in the very competitive uh, four-ton category. Um, what we've done differently here is that we've uh, built this vehicle on the uh, Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon uh, chassis, G-Wagon platform. Um, that is a very durable, very well-respected and well-known platform which comes out of the factory in, uh, in Graz, in Austria, um, as a 4.8 ton platform. So we don't need to perform any modifications. The, the vehicles in this weight category are more often than not um, heavily overstretched beyond the capabilities of their chassis and that very much is not the case here. Um, what we have here is a 4.8 ton Mercedes-Benz chassis. Um, the vehicle as you see it here with uh, between Stanag 1 to Stanag 2 level of protection for six occupants um, sits at about uh, four tons with an 800 kilo payload um, and we're really offering a, a high-end solution with uh, low lifetime cost, low cost of operation. So you're getting a Mercedes-Benz chassis, you're getting a Plasan kitted hull body um, and you're getting it in a, in a package which is cost competitive with, really with much lesser vehicles. This too, it, it has the same kind of architecture as our well-known Sandcat has. I, I mentioned the idea of, of replacing the, the roof, here we actually did it. This, this very vehicle for the last few months has been undergoing uh, uh, road tests actually with, a, with an open turret. Um, here at Eurosatory we wanted to show it with this uh, Raphael RCWS. Um, and literally, a, a week before the show, this, uh, the vehicle came back from testing. We bolted off the roof with the turret. We bolted on the roof, RCWS ready, and sent the vehicle here to Paris. This is uh, the uh, Yagu, one of our new vehicles. It's making its European debut. It's only been seen once before in uh, Mexico a couple of months ago where it was launched. 
Um, this is really opening a whole new niche. We're, we're answering a need here that's been a very real need for a long time. Um, the difference being that we've actually managed to do it. <laughs> um, so this is a one and a half ton vehicle as it sits at the moment, including the, uh, the RCWS with a three-man crew, um, protected all around um, against AK-47 762 fire at a ton and a half. Um, it's a very light, agile vehicle. Um, it has 95 horsepower, which may not sound like much, but with a ton and a half, that's 60 horsepower per ton. That's about twice what most of the other vehicles around us have. Um, so this is a vehicle that's really able to, to lay chase, um, uh, whether it's off-road, in urban environments. It's, it's specifically aimed really for uh, border patrol, for border guarding, for chasing smugglers and traffickers, those kind of in and out jobs. Yeah. This has been uh, uh, developed on the uh, Arctic Cat uh, chassis. Um, it's been upgraded a little bit, but again, because of the extremely light uh, uh, composite armor, this is an all composite body that we have on here. Um, so it, it really hasn't been, uh, there isn't that much extra weight on it compared to the way that, uh, the, the weight that it is designed for. Um, as I say, this is uh, really aimed at, uh, at, at border police and, uh, and those, kind of, uh, those kind of operations. As you see here, it has a, a light 762 uh, RCWS, a remote control weapon, controlled from the inside. One of the other options on this vehicle is a fully integrated drone. Um, it has its, its own drone, um, which can, uh, has a, a few capabilities, one of them being a follow me capability. So it can be set to either follow itself and then there is a screen inside the vehicle. It's hugely valuable when you're chasing off-road in, in territory that you don't know to be able to see what's over the brow of the hill and what's around the next corner. It, it can, you know, as much as the power to wait, the ability to know what is over the brow of the hill can really let you keep your foot down. Um, so by having this follow me drone and the internal screen, that really allows you to do that. And of course, the drone can also be set to follow somebody else, the person that you're chasing, the uh, uh, Toyota Hilux with 100 kilos of cocaine in it that you're, that you're chasing after those guys. Um, and this allows you to keep your eye on them. The drone can also be tethered. Um, so we have the capability of uh, tethering it by a cable um, for, for static use. And that allows the drone to stay in the air almost indefinitely. Um, and now you've got a, 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 a observation post that you can take anywhere, you can park it up, you can send this drone up into the, into the sky and it can be beaming its images really back anywhere that you would like them to. You are here on the part of KMW, part of the KNDS group. And we see in the background a demonstrator for our amphibious vehicle. Very new to combine the benefits from a land vehicle with a swimming vehicle. It's a new design built from building blocks which we have in other vehicles. For example, the Puma. So we use a decoupled running gear from Puma. We use a rubber track from DST which also belongs to the KNDS family. Uh, we have an uh, upgraded Puma engine and by that enough power for land mobility and uh, with 13 uh, kilometers per hour very good water mobility also and therefore that's a real good proof of principle for this design. Maybe you know other things like uh, the uh, amphibious assault vehicle in the United States which uses other technology but here if we would lose the main engine and the main engine stops the vehicle is still swimming what would be not the case with other vehicles. We have our own remote controlled weapon station we have uh, a lot of other weapon station and turrets available in the group so you can use an extra, an extra turret for example that is, uh, that is the benefit of this uh, uh, next uh, KMW team, where you have a lot of possibilities within the same group. This is the heavy duty version of the Dingo, which brings the Dingo vehicle from 12.5 tons now up to the 20 ton class. And with that, you can imagine there are a lot of additional possibilities concerning payload. The demonstrator, which we he have on the Eurosatory here, shows a new ambulance version and also a protected carrier version. 
We had to extend the length because we need a third axle, otherwise you cannot handle a 20 ton uh, payload or a 20 ton vehicle on just two axles. The mission module is simply larger and by that of course you end up with a more heavy uh, mission module and therefore you need the third axle. The transmission is now fully automatic and the engine also has uh, been pimped up, let's say it that way. So uh, of course we want to go with all our vehicles or we want to have with all our vehicles high mobility even for off-road driving and therefore the Unimog chassis was a good commercial of the shelf available chassis and if you combine it with the mission module with the well protected or let's say in its class even one of the best protected mission modules you end up with such a vehicle. As you mentioned, there are a lot of different versions of the Boxer, but it, it are not different versions of the vehicle, it are just different versions of the mission module. Because the interesting part at Boxer is its modularity. The vehicle uh, exists from a drive module and mission modules, which you can interchange in 30 minutes. So, and here we combined a mission module with a turret from the Puma, uh, once more an example that it's very easy for us to build from different building blocks new complex vehicle systems. We have it in Germany, we have it in the Netherlands, we have it in Lithuania now and there are also additional customers coming up who are interested in the variety of this vehicle. I fully agree that Leopard is one of the most used uh, main battle tanks in the world. We have a huge user club and all really benefit from this type of club where they can uh, ask all the questions and as soon as the uh, equipment then is Leopard proven by KMW they can be assured it really works. So we, al we always have these ideas from from a lot of different user countries and then we come up with solutions. Here you see a Leopard A7 and for the first time we are showing here on Eurosatory even a combination from a German main battle tank Leopard and a French Leclerc. So what we did there is we combined a Leclerc turret with a KMW chassis. It is really a proof of our new capabilities within the industry team Nexter and KMW. So in very short time we could combine these building blocks. The vehicle really drove excellent and had excellent uh, shooting results. Uh, so it is not only a demonstrator for a show, it is a real vehicle and uh, could be a starting point for a new European tank. Uh, we have already benefits with this vehicle because we have by the uh, Leclerc turret uh, upgrade potential of almost six tons, which offers a lot. How does it came to that? Because the Leclerc turret is not so heavy as the Leopard turret. It has an automatic loader and therefore we can save the uh, position for a manned loader. The last weeks we had been in Portugal for firing tests and really excellent results with this new vehicle. We are ready to deliver it and we are also ready to deliver even new versions with other capabilities. So just a starting point, bring together the necessary building blocks and set up new variants. Of course, always uh, the armor is uh, an upgrade possibility where we look from the very beginning because the threat is changing so rapidly and you have to do, uh, but for that you have to have um, reserve in the weight possible and of course we don't want to lose our high off-road mobility and uh, therefore we have a uh, a real capable engine in the in the Leopard and that are some of the basic figures of the vehicle.